Hi guys, um, today we're going to talk about the, the Outroot Challenge that we've got this weekend. Um, something that our athletes, well, we've, we've put to our athletes to, to do and build some, uh, some time in the saddle um, over the weekend. So we've been taking a few questions from our, from our athletes and we're going to try and work our way through them. So first off, um, I've got Sean with me to, to talk through some of the details about nutrition, recovery, um, how we're going to tackle the challenge, and uh, I'll just quickly introduce uh, what the the Outroot Votopia uh, challenge is. So we've got three days of riding: Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, it's three stages, each different, and it's based on the Outroot events that are, are generally uh, multi-stage um, sportifs, uh, generally in very hilly locations and mountainous routes. Um, so we've got stage, I'm just going to show you on, on, the, uh, on the website, we've got stage one on Monday, uh, which is based off the, the mega pretzel. Um, it's 51 kilometers and 800 meters of climbing. Um, rough estimation of time for those who have asked. I've done the portion of the st stage that we're riding in about an hour and 50, and that was averaging 185 watts. Um, so you'll, you can get a picture of that knowing what you're sort of going to or expecting to ride that. Um, you've got the Epic KOM Reverse, uh, which is 6.3 kilometers and an average of 6.3, but it's steeper than doing the Epic KOM forward. Um, so be prepared for that one. And then we're finishing at the Volcano, which is only sort of 3.8 kilometers um, and an average of 3.2%. So it's not as challenging. Um, Stage two is the pretzel. So this is, uh, unfortunately, it's only a short start. And after five kilometers, you hit the epic KOM. And and then we're going up the radio tower. So you've got a very steep section. It's, it's not the longest, but um, after the, it's, it's you've already climbed for 9.5 kilometers up the epic. And then the radio tower is generally about 14%. So really, really tough. And then come down a large flat section, and then you're going to do the um, epic reverse again, which we did on the Friday. Um, so that's probably another half an hour climb. Um, and then the final day is uh, based on Quatch Crest. So we've got uh, 45 kilometers. Um, it's generally rolling at the start as we go through the, um, what's it called? Uh, Titans Grove, that's the one. And then we hit the uh, Alp de Zwift. So you've got, for most people, I guess an hour, if not more, of climbing. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, 12 kilometers at eight and a half percent to the summit. And then we're done. So it's, um, it's, it's quite a challenge. And we're going to talk through a few details of how we, how we might tackle it. So um, in terms of equipment, the first few questions I had was equipment, which bike should I use, which wheel should I use? Well, I've checked this morning, um, Swift uh, giving everyone the same bike, uh, which is a Calnago bike, I think, um, and you'll get given a jersey. So you don't need to worry about that. Everyone's on the same bike in game. Um, and then in terms of settings, I guess the first thing to talk about is our trainer settings for those using smart trainers. Um, if leave it, we don't tend to change things before races, so treat this as the same. If you've got your trainer set at 50% trainer difficulty, don't suddenly change it before three days of writing. If you've not if you've not ridden up some of these climbs before with like 100% difficulty, then um, then don't do it now. Um, certainly on the radio tower, it's 14% on 100% difficulty. It's pretty hard to turn the pedals. So, um, and obviously if you suddenly turn it up, you're gonna be putting a lot more torque through the pedals than you used to uh, and recruiting more muscle. So you might end up riding the climbs at much lower cadences um, and and, uh, and just generally fatiguing yourself more. So um, keep it where it's at for now. If you're used to riding on the 100%, great. Um, give it, you know, make take, take the most out of a challenge and get those sort of strength benefits. Um, yeah, and then what we're on to after that, trainer settings, how to ride it. How are we going to tackle this one, Sean? Yes, yeah, so obviously you can approach it as a zone two ride, same as your long rides the weekend, um, work on the higher end of that, maybe the lower end of zone three. Obviously when you hit the hills, you would be inclined to go to a higher end of zone three, maybe even touching zone four for some of them. But yeah, it's about managing your energy. Um, if you don't have to uh, expend much on the downhills, don't. Uh, but if you're trying to bridge a gap, yeah, keep on the pedals. But 
it's entirely up to you as uh, to what you want to get out of it, whether you're doing this as a, a training session or if you, if you feel good and you want to push on a bit more. All, all is here at the side of the course. And at the end of the day, we're not training for indoor races, we're training for real races outdoors, hopefully in the later stage of the year. We don't want to spend our matches uh, so early on in the season. Yeah, that's it. I, I guess I guess for our guys, we, we're treating this as a, like a nice weekend of uh, accumulated volume, um, a bit of a challenge in terms of riding the, riding these uh, course. So rather than going out and doing a six hour ride at the weekend, um, while it's still sort of cold and a bit wet, we're going to get our get our six to eight hours, I think, in total over three days um, indoors. So we, 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 I think, yeah, like, exactly like you said, generally zone two, you probably find yourself in zone three on the climbs. And if you make sure in Zwift, if you have the trainer um, sort of stress at the bottom of the screen, you can turn it on in the companion app. A good guide, if you don't know your zones or your exact numbers in terms of power, is the is to use the colors. So um, as you're pedaling, you get the different colors to show your effort. So I think zone two, uh, which you want most of the time is green. When you go up into zone three, it's gonna go to yellow. And then as you sort of, if you're zone one, when you come downhill, it's gonna be blue, if not gray. Um, so that's a good a good way of sort of guiding your effort. Um, yeah, so, okay, the challenges. This is where we're going to get in. Most people have asked then about nutrition. So should we talk about how we're going to prepare uh, pre-ride in terms of what we're going to eat or um, how we're going to make sure we're getting our glycogen stores topped up? Yeah, so I think the one thing that you need to remember is it doesn't necessarily start on the morning of the event. The night before and the day before is just as important. So if you can get your, if you've got a run schedule that day or a bike session schedule that day, try and get it done earlier on in the day so that you're not dipping into them stores that you, uh, later on in the evening. Um, the prioritize have a decent meal, um, something heavily carbohydrate. Obviously, we're not expecting you to carb load uh, with sh such short notice and then not be in your, your main event. Uh, but maybe you can take an extra serving of whatever you, you have as carbohydrates that evening, be it potatoes, be it pasta, whatever it may be. Um, yeah, it's, it's not the time to be um, holding back on energy. This is the time to be kind of stocking up within reason. Um, and then obviously the, your breakfast the next morning. Um, so as Paul mentioned before, um, you can porridge, maybe like salt, would be a great way to set yourself up well for the day, even having a bit of fruit in that. So, You've got slow release carbohydrates from the porridge and uh, faster release from the fruit in it. Uh, and then you've got the salt, so you're topping up your sodium levels. So stay hydrated the day before, topping up your sodium in the morning, and leave that with the uh, salt in your porridge or maybe having um, an electrolyte drink prior. So you're, you're really setting yourself up well to perform at your best. Yeah. You know, uh, the fibre of the porridge, if you, if you are even on the side of college, the fibre, if you do have any stomach upset in the bike, um, eggs are a great alternative because with it being a low intensity um, for the first hour generally with zone two to zone two is not high a real high intensity effort you will be using a lot of fat stores so yeah don't be afraid of having fat for breakfast it's, it's not a, a sprint distance triathlon where you need the, the sugar in your system straight away but, yeah that's what i was gonna say obviously if you've had your meal the night before don't leave it too late so you're not going to bed with a stomach full like get, make sure you've given yourself time to sort of digest and then in the morning, obviously, we've got everyone, especially on the Friday and, and the weekends, you're working around your sort of family or daily um, uh, work commitments, uh, social, well, not social commitments at the moment. But um, yeah, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're waking up and wanting to hop on the bike straight away, obviously just eat slightly less and you probably find yourself consuming a bit more. So maybe that's when you're going to have, you've already topped up your, your glycogen levels in, in, in your muscles. Um, just having a smaller breakfast so you're not getting on the bike completely heavy and your stomach's uh, completely full because um, otherwise you'll you know you'll have cafe legs basically uh, <laughs> um, so then yeah I, I mean straight away we're talking about how to fuel this ride and obviously the challenge here we've got is this is a free day event and we want to make sure that we're fueling ourselves during the ride for um, and not depleting ourselves each day so we can hit the, the following day fresh so do you want to talk about some rough principles on this and just how much we how much we should how much we should be eating and when yeah so i think firstly the main thing is that you, you're aware that you do need to consume um 
as much energy as you can within this. Um, I've seen it myself as an athlete and people have coached. You see them at the, the last lap of an Ironman course and you see that their few boxes popped up to the last. They, they should have top, topped into that very early on. Yeah. They've got an early all the nutrition to let to take in the last 10 miles. Um, so learn from that and like maybe you can have a timer on your head unit if you are using one. Set it to beep every 20 minutes, maybe every 30 minutes as a reminder. Right, you need to eat something here now. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid of sugar. Sugar is your friend in this kind of thing. Um, it's quick. It's uh, very dense in nutrition. So yeah, um, as uh, Paul will, will show you some of the, the solid kind of fuel methods that we plan to use. And then there's uh, obviously the liquid alternative. So yeah. obviously the liquid alternative. Which, I was going to say, so... Uh, generally we've, we've had a bit of a conversation before this and just uh check we we're online but there's or on principle but there's we're talking generally about 60 to 90 grams per, of carbohydrate per hour and and uh sort of sean mentioned there's been a few studies recently so there's there's uh, it doesn't necessarily matter on your on your body weight so much generally people can digest a similar amount whether you're a really big athlete or a, or a lighter person um so we're going to talk i think we're going to talk through two options aren't we we, we discussed so we're obviously we're indoors uh we we're not too concerned with how much uh weight we're carrying so if you want to fuel your ride on cake though i won't recommend it you could you don't need to stick it in your pocket so you've obviously got your solid options um bananas uh flapjack bars um you can make yourself a, a wholemeal sandwich with like peanut butter get some fats in uh, and jam uh rice cakes um just general cereal bars but we're looking to you can look at the packet and just see how much, how many grams of carbohydrates are in them, and you can start to piece together. Well, how are you going to mix your fuel sources through uh, through the ride? We know that each each uh, stage is going to take you at least two hours, um, so you want to make sure you've got something extra to hand as well if you are sort of feeling fatigued. Um, and then the second option is to is to basically we'll, we'll we'll talk about hydration in a second, but it's to put it in your make it really simple and put it in your bottle. So do you want to explain that, Sean? Yeah. Um, so just kind of what Paul said there, the, the, obviously the, the solid foods are ideal health-wise, but of course the later stages of the day, especially if you're finished on that hill, you might not want to be uh, chewing on them, um, whatever it may be, for a long time. So yeah, the solid foods are great earlier on, but the uh, liquid stuff is, is a greater alternative in the, the later stages of it. So. Obviously your gels, uh, I'd be inclined to weigh out how many gels you need. So on roughly, given that there's a range for each gel, uh, three gels should be more than adequate. Uh, and then if you are using caffeine, maybe mix that in with it. So I myself, I'll be having three gels mixed in with a high five electrolyte tablet. Um, and if I, if I am feeling it, then I might throw in a, a caffeine um, beverage in with it. I have it all mixed up so i know number one i'm getting the electrolytes back but i'm uh, losing my sweat and um, i've got my carbohydrates from my gels and then i'm getting a bit of a caffeine kick uh, to keep me um, going well uh, and then I'll, I'll have that in two different bottles um, equally you could have the uh, you could split that as four gels in your second bottle and then three gels in your, your uh, first bottles just you can you can distribute it how you want uh, but yeah, when you need it, it's later on the race. And the worst case scenario is you look down at your bottle and you see that three quarters of it are still remaining with uh, what, four or five miles to go. You want to have that in your system because it takes a while to break all this down, even if it's liquid. Yeah. It takes time to break time. So make sure it's, it's in your system well before the last 20 minutes because at that stage, you're not going to see the benefits of that until you're actually yeah. off the bike. And that's... That's it. The key, I guess the key to this is, you know, we've talked about we're riding at a fairly low intensity, but we want to make sure we're not depleting ourselves through the ride, especially if we end up, we do end up on the bike for two and a half plus hours. Um, and obviously we've, we've got three days of riding to sort of make sure we're keeping our energy levels like topped up. So um, don't, don't leave it an hour in, into your ride to start fueling, start 20 minutes in and we're just going to top it up um, and we're not going to suddenly eat sort of, everything we need to eat in an hour we're not going to eat sort of 60 to 90 grams of carbs all in one hit we're going to sort of attack it every 20 minutes and with the nature of those courses make sure you know the course profiles because 
the last thing you want to do is hit the bottom of a climb and be trying to stuff down a banana or a bar um, and have that sitting in your stomach or chewing and it affecting your breathing while you're climbing at slightly higher at a higher intensity um, so generally if you can sort of make sure you're fueled 10 minutes before you hit the climb attack the climb as soon as you get to the top make sure you're sort of rehydrating taking some fuel in and then you can digest it when you're spinning down and cycling on the flat a lot easier yeah um hydration <laughs> <laughs> the, the liquid stuff i was on about um so a lot of you probably think that a bottle of water will be handy to have on the side unfortunately water though i'm not going to replace the electrolytes you're losing from sweat so i think to remember this is um sweat although yeah, you feel like you're getting a good workout from it um, you want to minimize the amount of sweat you want to heat is not your friend with this you want to like maintain your core temperature as low as possible and uh, whether that's opening windows if you're lucky enough to have a, a really big fan use it make the most of it yeah. because accumulate peace will really like substantially uh, impact your performance yeah. uh, I mean, there's a reason the fastest horses are not in the hottest countries uh, it's just the, the two don't bowl as well you can't have heat on uh, a fast horse than on one um, but yeah so obviously as i mentioned water is not adequate so then what is your electrolyte tablets are a great way of getting in the, the salts lost in your sweat. Um, so pulse ride, topping up them with those um, electrolyte stores, pulse ride is really important because if you're in a deficit on day one, that's going to creep into day two and you're just fighting to lose balance then for day three. It's just going to be a very unpleasant experience. It's going to put you off wanting to get on the job again. So we want this to be an enjoyable experience um, we want this to be um, something that you want to do again and the best way to have that uh, achieved is by staying on top of it nutrition wise so, yeah we, uh, you can consume um, milk post uh, fries be that in a protein shake be it just a, a milk uh, drink in general it's going to be the best uh, source of electrolytes that um, you can get post fry um, and as well as that you'd be quite fed up of the synthetic taste of your electrolyte tablets things like that so milk would be a refreshing drink to have at the end of it all yeah, yeah. i always like the um there's the salt tab um tablets and then just take them like one a day or before i'm riding because you get a lot more electrolytes in, in, in them than you do in the sort of the the hydration tablets themselves but there's a massive variation i, I guess what we sort of we haven't gone to there's, there's a massive variation between individuals so while everyone might sweat a there's a, I think it's a 40% variation. Um, check out Precision Hydration's website for details. But um, there's a massive variation in the amount of salts that you actually lose between different individuals. So if you know you're a heavy sweater when you see lots of like white on your clothes after races, you need to get more electrolytes into your systems. And obviously we're riding indoors. Uh, yes, we've got windows open and we've got fans, but our, without the airflow, our core temperatures just skyrocket. Um, so make sure you just... You, the, the simplest ways is just seasoning your food so a bit of salt in your porridge um salt and and, and uh, seasoning um your food the night before and, and sort of after races and um, you obviously don't want it to affect your recovery by waking up in the middle of the night with cramp um because that's that's not going to go well so yeah just try and stay on on top of that um, I suppose, like, just off the back what you said there about keeping cool um probably one of the best things you could do with your uh, drinks prior is leave them in the freezer um just to the extent um that they're starting to, to freeze take them out and it's almost like a slushy beverage and they've shown to drop and um, core temperature a lot more effective than a, a room temperature drink alone yeah so, something to think about to, to try yeah. obviously don't leave it in there overnight otherwise you're not getting any drink you know, that's it out, outdoors i tend to drink a lot less but indoors um i'll i'll be going for a bottle an hour just just as a rough sort of um rough guide so um like i said i think we're looking at at least two hours each day um and it'll be more for 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 many so um having a third bottle to hand is is really useful you don't want to be stopping and getting off the bike so in terms of being organized um just have everything next to you and easy easy to, uh, easy to grab um is, is the best way to go um, I think another thing, don't be a slave to the plan either. If we, if we do say 20 to 30 minutes, if you feel thirsty, take a drink. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to restrict yourself, but yeah. 
Yeah. Um, recovery. Oh, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about recovery. So um, the first thing we, 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 we discussed this before, each of these stages has your recovery starts as, while you're still on the bike effectively. So each of these stages has a summit finish. So for on each stage, you're going to be cycling uphill, I think for at least 30 to 40 minutes um, on every stage. So there's, there's going to be a decent amount of work. So probably a lower cadence as well. So once you cross the line, don't get off the bike straight away. Um, we want 15 minutes of easy spinning. So if this is either going downhill um, or exit the course and go somewhere else, but we just want 50, 15 minutes of just spinning any lactic out the legs. Um, so generally a higher cadence, anything 80 to 90 sort of RPM would, would be really good. Um, and then this is an ideal opportunity to get your, well, start topping up your energy levels again. So protein protein shakes if you've got one so sean do you want to add, add on that yes protein obviously protein shakes the best thing to go for because it's obviously we have condensed uh, high protein source if, if you don't have access to a protein shake uh, one good alternative would be either a smoothie either a greek style yogurt and maybe a bit of fruit or uh, granola with greek style yogurt and um, yeah once you're getting some kind of animal based protein into you um, you're, you're really facilitating your recovery. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, nuts and things like that for, for people that are not fond of the animal base product. But yeah, if, if, you, if you can get it in as, as, as soon as possible, uh, even in the cool down, uh, as we were mentioned before, it's you're not going to be um, wanting to stay on the bike much longer. And um, so if, if you can get that recovery process started straight away, uh, you really stand to you. Because yeah. if, you, if you leave it to, oh, I'll do it after, I'll do it after I get on the bike. That turns into I'll do it after the bike or after I've looked at my data. And then before long, an hour or two's passed and you've missed that window for recovery. So yeah, get on it straight away, have the stuff beside the turbo trainer and um, ready to go. And that'll really really stand to you in the, the next few days. Yeah. Oh well yeah. I'll add pro protein powders could be a whole other uh video in itself, but there's there's plenty out there. There's different uh, you know, if there are like low carbohydrate ones as well um, but there's also plenty of vegan ones now with sources like pea protein uh hemp protein and, and uh, rice and various other ones as well so there's plenty of like vegan options um out there too um otherwise yeah we <laughs> we'll get on to the next stage but exactly as sean said if you get in the shower and then start looking at all your ride data or chat to your friends and post something on social media and stuff you, it's an hour before you're eaten so um if you can have something ready to start your recovery while you're doing your spin down brilliant if not try and get it all as quick as possible do everything else as quick as possible and then other great sources you know everyone's favorites eggs and we said about sort of like sean mentioned milk earlier so a nice uh milky coffee um with a yeah with with your a couple of eggs post ride scrambled omelets etc um would be would be great um and then it's just into obviously there's additional then fueling through through the day so if we filled if we fueled our ride and we've taken on enough during the ride and fueled that the calorie the calorie deficit we've created during that ride you can then generally eat normally i'm sure you'll all be eating slightly more anyway and don't don't hold back you know we've got we've got three days of riding here so um just keep those carbohydrate sources topped up uh potatoes you know look well lower lower gi sources so like sweet potatoes whole grain pastas anything that's sort of a lower not going to have massive glycogen spikes is also sort of beneficial or, or um a good choice shall we say um stretching do you want to talk about stretching yeah so obviously staying on top of your stretching uh, I, I did a few hours post so once, first and foremost, your nutrition helps first. Um, because if the, if the building blocks aren't there to rebuild the muscles, it doesn't matter what you do. Whether you get the sports massage done or you're um, stretching, first and foremost, nutrition. Um, so, yeah, give it a few hours, let your body temperature come down nicely, make sure you've got your, your required food post, and then stretch it. Really prioritize your hip flexors, your, your quads. Uh, your glutes would get quite tight because obviously if you're on the, the, the pedals the whole time and um, they're not getting a chance to really switch off and um, also your upper back because naturally enough as cyclists we tend to be very uh, hunched over and yeah. get tight in the shoulders so keep them nice and loose 
uh, even scratching your upper chest. Just you, you don't want to be accumulating, accumulating any negatives or trigger points. Yeah. Well, well, well. It's going to be day two or day three. It's, it's going to make it anything worse than it needs to be. Yeah, we can add a link with this video, but otherwise, if you just go on YouTube and put in uh, stretching for cyclists, there's a, there's a few good like uh, basic stretch videos and like yoga videos as well. Um, that are great for like hip flexors and, and your hamstrings and glutes. So, um, but yeah, each day that would be good. We're going to be on the, like we said, on the bike for two to three hours each day. Um, sleep, sleep's massively important. Um, that's, that's, that's the, the key to your recovery all the time in terms of training and racing. So, um, if you're not getting 80, eight hours plus, you can, you can use all the, uh, uh, supplements you want, but sleep is the key to key to recovery and and sort of benefiting from adaptions so um try not to eat too late before you go to bed try and minimize your screen time try and a, a shower before bed to lower your core temperature um is good um considering your caffeine consumption through the day so if you are having a coffee post ride and you well don't if you've done it in the evening but generally minimizing your your caffeine in the afternoons uh because the caf caffeine half-life's uh really high um just so you're you're not wired when you go to bed and um that's yeah just try and sleep as best you can which is where most people struggle but there's, there's there's lots of different things we can do to improve our sleep hygiene um comfort we said we'd mention which is uh comfort of riding for six hours over three days which some of you might not have done so and we're talking generally here like saddle sores again riding indoors with the heat much higher and with less airflow um we're more likely to sort of get saddle sores from from sweating um so as soon as you're off the bike shower straight away um dry yourself really really well um even a hairdryer <laughs> or i suggest a hairdryer don't go putting on lots of oils and creams if you do get any saddle sores developing keep the skin dry and and then um change your bib shorts every day and just make sure you're wearing clean bib shorts and obviously if you've used chamois cream before um that can help as well and reduce friction uh when you're cycling so those are the sort of tips in terms of comfort on the bike um is that it Have just off the back of that mixing yeah. up your position so feel yeah. free because um, i find riding indoors you can end up with a lot of pressure it falls like this palsy so the nerve gets trapped so don't don't be riding on the heads all the time feel free to vary it yeah um, You'd be glad of the relief in some muscles. So yeah. Yeah, we've said that as well. Obviously, you know, we're, we're triathletes and we might want to be practicing riding in the time trial position. But um, over three days, even if you do little stints of ten minutes, we don't want to suddenly ride six hours in the in the time trial position because you're gonna you're gonna destroy your neck for starters and just um, affect your breathing. And maybe you, if you've not done that before, you're gonna get um, use your glutes and hamstrings sort of more um so yeah just um just don't change too much and try and don't do too much on the on the time trial bars uh for this one um i think that's about it isn't it okay otherwise then um if you've got any more questions you can drop us a message or comment and you know use our groups otherwise yeah i hope you're looking forward to the challenge i hope that covers everything and uh yeah it should be a good three days and solid solid training um for for everyone um so let's enjoy it anything else to add sean just wish some good luck yeah yeah good luck guys and uh and thanks for joining us and watching this cheers